What's good? Welcome in. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report. I'm Chase Sr. Coming your way on today's show, exploring all of the latest 49ers news and rumors, taking some questions from a lot of our loyal subscribers who have some questions about the 49ers draft plans, some trade rumors, what they could still do in NFL free agency. We're opening up the floor for everything here on today's show. Eric Mitchell kicks things off with the $2 Super Chat. First time donator here. Eric, we appreciate you. He said he's worried about the pass defense, strong safety, free safety, and cornerback. Now, I disagree with cornerback. I do think that what the 49ers have at that cornerback position is a pretty solid group. Charvarius Mooney Ward was good last year. Don't sleep on Diamador Lenore. I thought that he played some pretty solid football down the stretch. Samuel Womack can fill in in the slot there. Cheaper option than Jimmy Ward. I think that with his instincts that he showed at Toledo and what he did in the preseason at moments at the NFL level, that he can be a very good slot corner. You brought in Isaiah Oliver, who can also play there in that slot as well. At that safety spot. Talano Hufanga was excellent last year. He's a young building block on this defense. He really does play the way that Troy Palomalu did. And I'm not just saying that because of the Polynesian connection. Causes havoc, causes destruction around the line of scrimmage. You send him home on some blitz packages. He's really good against the ground game. At moments, good instincts in the past game, like picking off Matthew Stafford for that pick six in primetime last year, which really did help turn around the Niners season. But he also got caught slipping in pass coverage a little bit. Needs to get better there. And if he doesn't make adjustments, teams are going to continue to target him. Deshaun Gibson, as an older veteran who was originally brought in last year to be on the practice squad, played so well that once Jimmy Ward came back from injury, they made him play slot nickel corner because they wanted to keep Deshaun Gibson on the field. Can he have yet another season like he did in 2022? I think either way, San Francisco does have to draft a safety, to pair him up with Talano Hufanga moving ahead into the future because obviously it's a short-term play with Deshaun Gibson, who they re-signed in free agency on that one-year deal. Next up, wow, how about this? I have a burner account. Interesting. Good picture here. Going all the way back to my WNEP days, somebody did their research here, stalking me on social media. Props to you. Any chance the 49ers could trade for Buda Baker? I guess I officially made it too, right? So for Buda Baker, I absolutely love the player. I think he's fantastic. I think that this is a guy who is a Swiss army knife who can affect the game in so many ways. And almost like how the NBA has become a positionless game, Buda Baker is positionless and a big time player. The only thing makes a lot of money, which we'll uncover here coming up. But as a dog, Buda Baker is a baller, right? You look at what he's done over the last four years, a great cultural figure inside that Cardinals locker room and a guy who on the field always pops off your screen and on the tape. 2019, 147 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, six pass breakups, zero interceptions, and really he's been a tackling machine. Three out of the last four years, he's surpassed 100 tackles, but also Going back to the versatility point, you see the tackles for a loss here and last year used a little bit differently. That's why that number went down, but also a lot of pass breakups and solid interception numbers. The thing with Buda Baker, which makes him somewhat unrealistic for San Francisco, is the price tag here. They need to restructure some more contracts to open up some money for Buda Baker. But at 27 years old, this is a guy who, if you do pay, going to be a building block for your defense. And again, a very good player alongside Talanoa Hufanga, but can play linebacker, can play a little corner too, in the box, out of the box, out deep too. And $14.7 million, somewhat affordable for a player with the going rate of Buda Baker, considering the impact that he has on the respective defense. So with that, let's ask you this grade Buddha Baker as a player Madden style 1 to 100 so on the Madden scale how would you rate Buddha Baker 1 to 100 let us know down below in the comment section Tyler Caressley with the five dollar donation thank you my guy Chase what do you think about Chris Conley becoming a Niner this is a guy who has good speed Good size, 6'3", ran a 4'3", 540-yard dash. He was a third-round pick by the Chiefs back in 2015. 
not a lot of production throughout his career, does have some burners. Can he revive his career to a certain degree with San Francisco? Potentially. This is an organization that does do a quality job of developing wideouts. Could Chris Conley be that guy? We're going to take more of your questions and analyze some more stuff coming up around the corner. But first, today's 49ers report is sponsored by a brand new sponsor here at Chat Sports. It is Z Biotics, and you can get 15% off a product that has absolutely changed my life, especially after some of our crazy watch parties. We're going to put that link in the comment section and in the description of this video. Let's face it. After all of you hit me with a bunch of super chats, I don't bounce back well the next day. I'm 31 years old. I just don't bounce back like I used to. But that is until I found Zbiotics. Zbiotics, pre-alcohol probiotic, is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme, right, to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. Drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly. Get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Give Zbiotics a try for yourself and see what I'm talking about with my recovery by heading to zbiotics.com slash chatsports to get 15% off your first order when you use the code chatsports at chatsports. Checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash chat sports, code chat sports at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring today's video and allowing me to bounce back quickly after our crazy watch parties and live shows. No more paper towels coming in next. What's the Brandon IU trade latest? By the way, I kind of have a hot take on paper towels and toilet paper, right? When you're living with roommates or you're working in a workplace with others. And here it is right here. So I think it's a complete violation if you're working with others or living with others and you leave the toilet paper roll empty, like can you imagine you head to the bathroom and you're in desperate need of some toilet paper, you turn over and there's none left because nobody replaced the roll. That's a violation. The same can be said for paper towels and the username kind of reminds me of that. Let's say you work in a workplace, right? You take the last paper towel and you leave that roll bare that is a complete violation as well. What do you expect the other person to do? Make up for your laziness, and it's also immature. So for those of you who do that, you got to be better out there. What's the Brandon IU trade latest, though? Let's get to it. Look, here is why this has been at the center of conversation throughout this offseason. 49ers don't have a first-round pick this year. At some point, they're going to have to pay Brandon Ayuk. He's entering a critical year four. They have until May 1st to exercise his fifth-year option. If they do that, he's under team control for the next two years. Now, once that team control ends, Brandon Ayuk could be making, realistically, between 20 and $25 million if he continues his ascent. And he's gotten better every year that he's been in the NFL since being a first-round pick in 2020. I think he's one of the most slept-on, most all-around talented wide receivers in the National Football League. Great footwork, yards after the catch ability, contested catch rate, red zone threat. You can use them in between the 20s. So if the Niners don't believe that they can pay everybody on this roster, and it's tough, Nick Bosa payday coming, Fred Warner, you're already paying him, Trent Williams, George Kittle, the list goes on and on and on. If they can't afford Ike, would they trade him away for a first-round pick to get a player who's talented and cost-controlled over the next four or five years? That's a thought process there, but makes no sense to me. If you're competing for a Super Bowl and Brandon Ayuk is your number one wide receiver, which he is, he is better as a pure wide receiver than Devo Samuel. Why trade him away? Doesn't make sense. Our guy, General Manager Evan Henders, first time super chatter. Let's go, Evan. Let's go, Evan. Hey, Chase, will the 49ers target Miles Jack? Um, I don't know if they're going to target Miles Jack, honestly. I'm not sure if he is a great scheme fit, 
more of a 3-4 guy. And because of that, Steve Wilkes is coming in. He's really going to run much of the same defensive elements that the Niners ran last year. And I just don't see him coming in. I, you know what the buzz is right now is that Eric Armstead, if you're looking for an edge rusher, Evan, Unique Ngakwe is my dream target, but it's looking like they're flirting with the possibility of moving Eric Armstead back out to defensive end. When he played solely defensive end, that's when he had his best season, 11 sacks. Back in 2021, he was in a hybrid role, defensive tackle, edge rusher. I thought he played really, really well. So if you're looking for edge rushing help and you're paying him a lot of money and he's played well at edge in the past, move him out to edge and then you have Javon Kinlaw and Javon Hargrave as you're starting defensive tackles. So, Evan, if you're looking for guys who can produce some sacks, maybe that's the Niners' plan, and then we'll see what happens in the draft as well. PG2869, first-time Super Chatter. We appreciate the donation, even though that you're a Raiders fan. What's the last meaningful thing that the Raiders have ever done? I hear crickets. It's always controversy. Exactly. But PG, thank you so much. Mac Daddy, $5 donation. Thank you so much. Purdy's saying that he might not play. Wow. By the farm, Niners on a quarterback. Chase, where's the Jerry Rice jersey? We are, if you're watching this now, we probably did our 80,000 subscriber celebration on Friday. If you're watching us live here on Tuesday, join us 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock Pacific this Friday as we celebrate 80,000 subscribers. I'm going to be wearing the Jerry Rice jersey to celebrate 80,000 subscribers. Number 80 for 80,000. Purdy saying he might not play. I just read that as kind of a quote where he's like, yeah, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to play, but we'll see what happens. Like he didn't definitively say I'm not playing this year. With an elbow injury, you just can't rush it. 408 West, one of our OGs here on the show. $5 super chat. You are the man. Are the Niners still going to make moves at quarterback? I'm asking for a friend. Look, if they swoop in and they make a trade for Aaron Rodgers, I won't be shocked because that fits the timeline of – them being in a Super Bowl window right now. Now, they would have to clear up a bunch of money in order to maneuver that. And right now, they're sitting pretty in terms of financials with their quarterback room. Brock Purdy's not making anything. A million dollars in 2023. Trey Lance isn't making all that much money. Sam Darnold, same can be said for him. That has allowed them to really build up the rest of their roster. But Aaron Rodgers, a trade, unlikely. But shoot, he moves the needle, and he would make them immediate favorites to win the NFC and maybe even Super Bowl favorites. Great fit in Kyle Shanahan's system, too. Luscious DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson, he's talking about. Probably my favorite draft quarterback prospect in this draft. And if he fell to us, I feel as though we should take him. He reminds me of Tyrod Taylor, but younger. Thoughts? The Tyrod Taylor comp isn't bad. I think that DTR is a little bit more athletic right now than Tyrod Taylor, but I do think that he can fit in the mold of being a long-term quality backup quarterback in this league who could be in the league for 10-plus years and fill in in spot duty and maybe at some point have an opportunity to start for a team. If you can find him and draft him fifth, sixth, seventh round, see what he can do throughout training camp and these offseason activities, and he ends up impressing you like Brock Purdy, then do you decide to keep him on this roster as compared to a guy like Sam Darnold? You let Sam Darnold go. I think he had two and a half million dollars in guaranteed money. And then you keep the young asset in DTR. Uh, that's an idea that I'm sure the 49ers have talked about at least a little bit. Drafting him, they brought him in for a visit. So obviously they're pretty interested in him. Like his dual threat ability, he's a gamer. He's a dog. I'd like to see his accuracy improve a little bit because throughout his college career, that didn't improve. But he, as a player, did improve. Before we wrap up this mailbag, please make sure you subscribe to us here on the San Francisco 49ers Report. Now that I'm back from vacation, we're getting back to the grind of daily shows here on the Niners Report. We appreciate y'all. We'll round out with this poll question. We talked about Buda Baker a little bit earlier, so grade him as a player Madden style. EA Sports. It's in the game. 1 to 100. 